Yam Bar Podcast. My name is Brian Barcelo, host of this episode. Today, very special guest. He's a scientist, engineer, author, and lecturer. And he has a great hypothesis I want to share with you. It's called the rope hypothesis. It's going to explain to you, um, not just describe, <laughs> right, but explain the workings and mechanisms of a magnet and some other phenomena, mysterious phenomena, such as light and a whole bunch of other things. Before I hurt myself, I'm going to take it over to Bill Gates. Thank you for coming to the program, the podcast. Thank you, Bill. How are you doing, Brian? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Explain to us, Bill, exactly how does magnets work? Well, we, we have to go back, one, take one step backwards because that's going in the middle of the story. People might not understand what's going on here. Uh, uh, the main issue here is that, you know, we're criticizing what the establishment does. And it's very, not very nice or people think that everybody who attacks the establishment is simply a wacko. You know, he's out of his mind. And he gets treated that way. You know, you get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of rotten eggs thrown in my face. And, um, you know, and, and I think there's no room today for new theories. And that's part of the big problem. And I'm saying we have a problem with, with the interpretations, the physical interpretations of, um, of physics of all of physics, 100% of it. Specifically, um, everything dealing with invisible entities or invisible phenomena. Light, we can't see it, we don't know what, you know, we see light, but I mean, right. we don't know what light itself is. We don't know what, what is doing this, this magic. We don't know what magnetism is, you mentioned magnets. We don't know what uh, a magnetic field is made of. We don't know uh, what gravity is. You know, we drop everything, you know, you let go, something goes to the center of the earth, or at least to the floor. <laughs> right. I think everybody can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what's pulling that pen to the floor. And so, uh, you know, mathematical physics has been trying to find answers to these questions the last at least 400 years. We're talking about since the 17th century, you're looking at people like Newton and Leibniz and, uh, and uh, Huygens and so on. And all these people, since those days, have been trying to give an explanation to these things. And what we have today are irrational explanations. And I'm just going to give you a quick example that puts it in the correct light. You know, you, you have two particles, right? And I, I have my little props here every now and then, right? You have two particles, right? And you can consider these two atoms, two balls, whatever you want. Two, two rocks. How does this one pull on this one? Very simple, very simple problem. This is the entire universe, right? This is all there is. This is the entire system. And I'm saying, how does this one pull on that one? You cannot do it with discrete particles. I cannot throw, have this one throw stones at this one and bring it over. You know, I think that's straightforward. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that, you know, all atoms in the universe are interconnected. That's my starting point. I'm saying that every atom is interconnected. Now I can explain, if this is connected to that somehow, physically connected, then yes, when I move this one, I, this one will move. If, I, if this one pulls, this one will, will be dragged behind it. Now we can understand action at a distance. As long as we keep them separate and throw stones in between for little particles, we can't do that magic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to pull on a donkey, mm -hmm. you got to tie a rope to its neck and then you can pull it. But you cannot pull the donkey by throwing stones at it. <laughs> I think that makes, I think that's straightforward. Right. And this is the problem with mathematical physics. The, fu the fundamental problem is that mathematical physics tries to explain phenomena uh, using discrete particles. And I'm saying that the particle hypothesis has to once and for all be abandoned. It has to be, be thrown in the ash heap of history. And uh, here I have a little, um, which I presented last time, but here it gives you an idea of what I'm proposing. If this, is, if, if this is what mathematical physics proposes, which is on this side here, see? Mm -hmm. All the discrete particles, I'm saying that all atoms are interconnected. Okay? And, and, and I hope you can see that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be clear, yes. Okay, and so not only are they connected, but I'm saying how are they connected? I'm saying that what connects any two atoms 
and we're talking about the hydrogen atom here, you know, the simplest of all atoms. I'm saying that all atoms are interconnected by a rope, not by a wave. It's not that an atom throws a wave to another atom, but they're physically connected by a rope. And what light is, is a torsion of that rope. You got a little rope that I've made <laughs> some time ago, okay? Nice. And I'm saying, if you think of my two uh, fists as atoms, right? Mm -hmm. Right? If, that, if those fists are atoms, what an atom does during quantum jump, it expands and contracts, right? It goes like this. It, it expands, it, it's a little balloon that's expanding and contracting, okay? Mm -hmm. What it does, what it does is torque the rope. And light is a torsion that travels along the rope. That's why it's undulating, you know, and that's why it travels straight because this rope is tight. So we can explain many of the features. Now you can see why the electric field, in this case the thread, is at 90 degrees to the uh, magnetic field. And both of them embrace an imaginary axis. If you pull a rope tight, there is uh, uh, an axis that runs right through the center of that rope. And so we think uh, the rope is a better model to mimic or to simulate what we see with light. And now, yes, once you have that as a foundation, now you can explain, for example, magnetism. Here I have two little magnets, and we, we all know this magic, and it really is magic, because we can't see what it's doing in here. Here you have two little magnets, right? And let's see if I can do this. You know, if you, if you hold them, <laughs> if you hold up, uh, wrong side. See, if you hold the magnet there, right, you can see that it, it doesn't fall. So, so, so you know, it, 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 <laughs> it does this magic. Wow. And in fact, just before, before I, I get there, you know, you can do this on your own, but before I get there, I can already see that it's pulling on it. Yeah. And likewise, if I turn it around, I can't put them together. I, I try to put them together and they push each other apart, you know, it, it, it just goes sideways. You see that? And, and we say, well, what is this magic? You know, we can't see it. So, so how, how is Mother Nature doing this? And I'm saying if, uh, if you take, I'm saying that the physical mechanism is that these ropes, one of the threads comes loose. You got a rope, right? Now I'm going to pull one of the threads out, okay? So we have this situation. This one's tight, the blue one is tight, and this one swings around the blue one. Okay, so this is turning at great speeds, mm -hmm. and what, what the atoms are doing, they're twirling, and they're spinning one of the threads around the other. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we have many of these, you have a wall of threads, we say that's the magnetic field. Ah. How do we produce attraction? How do we produce attraction and repulsion? Mm -hmm. Well, if one wall is going in this direction and the other wall of threads is also going in the same direction, they're both going in the same direction, mm -hmm. when this one comes up, this one comes down and it pulls. Imagine two people skipping next to each other. Mm -hmm. One guy skips, the other skips in the same direction. When this rope comes up, this rope comes down. And this is the same thing, but with threads. The threads, one of the threads of the rope comes loose. One comes up, the other one comes down. And so they do this. And that's where it pulls. You turn the magnet around, mm -hmm. this one, right, for example. Mm -hmm. And now they're going like this. Now they're pushing each other away. Ah. And now the more threads that intervene, the harder it is to put them together because there are more threads pushing against each other. Now, the same, I'm saying that's what's happening with the magnet. Wow. The bottom line is we have a different explanation for light, magnetism, gravity, and uh, it's very hard to get it out there because the majority of people already have bought into the particle hypothesis mm -hmm. that mathematical physics sells. And we're saying what well, that that's got to change, or well, that's what we're trying. To well, do. that's what we're working on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, love, I love your word hypothesis. It's easy for the average person out here, you know, yeah. to understand because it's something that we see in our everyday lives. Some of those other ideas yeah, they yeah, come up with. You can illustrate it. You know, I mean, uh, one of the good things about the rope model is that you can illustrate it. Everything is illustratable. The guy only has to watch the movie and the point, the point of it is not for him to believe, to say, oh yes, you've convinced me, no. The, the issue is, do you understand the mechanism I propose? Only understand. If you understood it, we're done with science. 
Whether you believe it or not, that's a separate issue. Uh, that, I call that religion. <laughs> it's opinion. You know, whether you yeah. like this theory or the other theory, that's your personal opinion. The, the only issue is, can you understand the mechanism that I'm proposing? And that's when we have science. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have a different mechanism, fine. You know, we compare mechanisms. Right. But the issue is to understand, not to believe, not to, not to be convinced or be recruited or converted. You know, we have to distinguish that as well. There's one thing, um, you know, just from reading you know, comments on in the various pages that you have, I see I see some confusion where people are trying to wrap their minds around these threads. Now, and I'm one of them. One, one thing I was trying wrap to wrap your mind around these threads. Wrap the threads around your mind. Okay, yeah, made it work better that way. <laughs> Check this out, Bill. And that's where you're wrong. Exactly. Well, what, what I'm trying to see, what I tried to do was to actually shrink myself down to around the size of the threads. And Adam man. There you go. And what I'm trying to what I'm trying to see, I think when people are looking at it, they see a crisscross of threads all over the place. So in their minds it might make, I don't know if there's a color associated with that, <coughs> but it seems like it just blankets everything. And maybe they can't separate the individual threads. So I tried to shrink myself down to one roughly the size and maybe I can see the individual thread, so to speak. How is that? Is everything all blanketed? I don't know if I'm saying this properly, but is everything all blanketed with threads? Um, you know what I'm saying? Well, well I'm saying that if, if every atom in the universe right. is connected by, by a rope, mm -hmm. an electromagnetic rope, right. which uh, just, just uh, as an aside here, uh, which is where DNA got its shape. Sh the shape of DNA is a rope. It's a twisted rope. And I'm saying DNA copied light, and uh, but that's just an aside here. But right. if you if you look at two atoms, if they're connected by a rope, mm -hmm. you know, and we just go with that simple model, which is already quite complex in itself. <laughs> okay. you know, simple on the one hand, mm -hmm. symmetric also two two balloons united by a rope. Mm -hmm. That's a simple uh, simple and symmetric uh, mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, that, and we first must understand that because if, we, if we're going to go into you know how gravity works when you have many ropes pulling on something right. or you're talking about you know uh, for example the earth is connected to the sun mm -hmm. and I'm saying every atom on the earth is connected to every atom that comprises the sun mm -hmm. that means each from one atom here you have a rope going to you know an atom over there mm -hmm. and so you know here I have a little prop here you know okay right. uh, you can think of that as the many ropes Okay? Mm -hmm. And what the sun does essentially is, you know, twirl the earth around. That's what the sun does. Right. Now we can understand it because there's a physical connection, every atom here to every atom in the sun. Mm -hmm. But see, under the, uh, the uh, official model, you cannot explain that because, you know, y you have to invent either particles, mm -hmm. which don't work, you right. can't do it with particles, mm -hmm. and what general relativity has done is say, well, space is a physical object, time is a physical object, mm -hmm. we put them together, we create a four-dimensional object, and they warp it into some kind of bowl, mm -hmm. a roulette, and the Earth goes around it. So that's the mechanism, that's the physical interpretation that general relativity offers. And, you know, it, it, those are maybe simple, all of these are simple, to, when you just look at that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, when you get into the nitty-gritty, it's going to very, get very complicated. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We spoke about the no. We spoke about the ether. We spoke about the ether last time, and um, <laughs> right. And I, mem I mentioned like perhaps these threads that are all over connecting all of these various atoms. Perhaps that's the background, the the ether that people speak of or detect. We speak to that. Yeah, in, in a way, it's the you know the word ether. Uh, I gave a little presentation uh, in my channel the other day, mm -hmm. and um, and the word ether has been around for us. You know, since the days of the Greeks, at least, and uh, we've never really abandoned the yeah, the ether. In one way or another, there's always this invisible whatever that we call ether. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be uh, the uh, the medium that was undulating, that was vibrating, and they said, well, light is the vibration of the ether. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Einstein comes in, and he says, no, it's space time, but space time essentially is a medium. And, you know, you essentially treat it as a medium, and that's the ether of today. So, and, and, and you get into quantum mechanics, and they'll tell you that, 
particles come in, they pop in from the void, yeah. they call virtual particles, mm -hmm. and that's another ether. What is the cosmic background radiation? Ether. It's all ether. It's <laughs> just different names for ether, different concepts, but it's the same thing. And I'm saying, yeah, in that sense, the, the countless ropes that you, if you had God's eyes, you know, you could see everything mm -hmm. that's invisible. We could see all these ropes connecting every atom. And, and that's what we're sensing with the equipment, and, and that is the background radiation, and that's the ether that's in the background. Exactly. And well, I don't think um, you can avoid that. Right. Before we would go on, would you tell people where yeah. they can check out your material, um, like your lectures, um, your various uh, videos, and a little bit about the Rational Mind page on Facebook, if you would? Well, uh, I, I, I'm giving presentations in uh, Patreon, and uh, it's uh, the... the Anybody can locate it to look for rational science. Mm -hmm. And also I have the, the um, uh, these uh, lectures on YouTube, mm -hmm. and they can locate them there under the same name, rational science. Mm -hmm. And then we have a Facebook, uh, that's not handled by me, but I'm just one of the members, mm -hmm. and it's called also Rational Scientific Method, mm -hmm. and that's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are different forums where we go into and we discuss these issues. We try to discuss them from a rational point of view, trying to make sense of how this universe works. And that's what all these uh, forums really do, you know. We're just trying to make sense of this and not just say, well, you know, we don't know, and, uh, you know, particles attract particles, and, and by magic, and we have uh, warp space-time, and things that nobody can imagine. Yes, I try to. And, and, yeah. and, and, and we also campaign against what we call, call or consider nonsense, black holes, dark matter, all these, you know, entities that they've invented are conveniently heavy and invisible. Yeah. Yeah, notice that and, every and time it's so convenient. Yeah, I mean, from a mathematical point of view, right. uh, you can say, yeah, if you have a lot of mass, you don't care what it looks like, it can look like an elephant, mm -hmm. but the important thing is that you, you're concerned about the mass because that's what you're going to put in your equation. Mm -hmm. And we're saying that's mathematics. Now bring that into physics. What are we talking about? What physical object? And all the objects are conveniently invisible <laughs> and heavy. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of them seem so like patches. Like you'll, never see, you'll, never see a, you'll never see a black hole. Right. You will always have to infer it indirectly by watching something that's visible. Ah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of these things that they come up with, they seem like <coughs> patches or afterthoughts. You know, they run into a stumbling block, you know, with their theory or hypo hypothesis. And like you said, they have to create something, you know. Like, for instance, why doesn't um, the, the galaxies fly apart? Well, they said, well, it must right. be some dark matter or something or some other, you know. Correct. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. And stuff. Yeah. And yeah, and that's what they do. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, how they how they came up with dark matter. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who don't, you know, are not familiar with the subject, uh, mm -hmm. they looked at the galaxy and they find out that the galaxies on the outside, uh, the stars on the outside of the galaxy, mm -hmm. travel at the same speed or even faster than some on the inside, close to the center. Wow! Now imagine, imagine, imagine just two runners on a track, right? You mm -hmm. got a circular track. Mm -hmm. We all know that the guy on the inside, the guy who's got the inside track, you know, he's gonna go faster. Than the guy on the outside because he's got less, you know, less uh, uh, distance. Right, distance from, yeah. But w but when the guy on the outside goes faster, you know, you kind of say, well, I could explain that, and that's the case of uh, you know dark matter. What they did, they sprinkled all this heavy invisible kilograms on the outside of the galaxy, and they said, yeah. oh, see, now we can explain it. Oh yeah, but we can't see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. that, you know, you might as well put angels in there. Yeah, like unicorns or something like you had said. <laughs> Bill. I mean, you might have known good spirits and you're done with them. Well, well, Bill, time flies fast. You were so right about these podcasts. Time goes by super quick. And we're like really there at the end already. Is there anything that you like speak to the people about or anything like tell them before we end this podcast? Well, no, to keep an open mind, people should, should be aware that most of the theories today if, if you're going to propose a new theory, you're not going to be able to get it published because the publishing world is governed by the people who already went through the uh, uh, through through college and they've been brainwashed with with the old theories. Mm -hmm. And so the whole the whole um, uh, world of mathematics 
you know, these people believe in all these things, in black holes and uh, dark matter, and that particles do all these magical things, and that virtual particles come in from the void. And they do it all mathematically, mm -hmm. but they can't do it physically. They can't show me in the, in the lab. They can't even put it on the screen for me. And so what I'm saying is, if people really want to have an open mind and think a little bit outside the box, it doesn't mean they have to believe it, but if, if you want to stimulate your mind, you know, one good place is to go outside of the mainstream and find out what's out there. And again, you know, since it's very hard to publish, uh, you're, you're going to find a lot of this stuff today, in this day and age, on YouTube and places like Patreon, Facebook. You're going to have to just find a place that deals with this subject, with these subjects, right, uh, from a different angle. And that's what I'm saying, you know, uh, people should visit these sites. And they'll get a different, a different view of the universe, no doubt about it. Exactly. Yeah, like I said, the establishment, they have a dog in a fight, a horse in a race. They got skin in the game. They, you know, they got things to protect. I understand. Well, yeah. I publish, I published articles, but it's very hard to publish. It's ah. very hard to publish. And one of the reasons is that you got to be careful. You can't start your paper like saying, look, I'm going to show in, in, in this article, in this paper, that quantum mechanics is nonsense. You just can't start it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You gotta be very subtle and say, look guys, look, here's I'm proposing something different. You, know? Come on, you can't just go in there and say, Einstein, Einstein didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That'll go for some feathers. Like <laughs> Bill, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the podcast. The other thing, thank you so much for your hypothesis, that rope hypothesis. Yeah. Um, well, I hope it stimulates your mind. Oh, definitely and stuff. And um, another thing, um, what I love about it is that the average person out here will be able to understand physics <coughs> and perhaps yeah. you know, get more involved in I like that so much. And I appreciate you so much, Bill. Thank you so much for coming you know, together. You want to, just the, as a final okay. corollary, yes. I always say physics is for kids. It's like tricks the the. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Physics is for kids. <laughs> kids should be able to understand physics. Mathematics probably is not. Yeah, but that's a head scratcher. Yeah, <laughs> right. I appreciate you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bill Gating, the rope hypothesis. Thank you so much, Bill. Hey, <laughs> Once good. again, I thank each and every one of you for checking out the Yambar podcast. Join us again next time and check out our past um, episodes also. Once again, my name is Brian Barcelo, host of this episode of the Yambar Podcast. And remember, the Yambar Podcast is a place where you make it happen. <laughs> Peace. Thank you so much, Bill.